Hello, hello YouTube. It's been a little while, but I wanted to show to you my Noble Paladin build. It is an evolution of the Burnham build I did a little bit ago, where I had a mostly Faith Warrior focusing on fire damage, which was all well and good. However, fire damage, eh, it's easy to get resistances for. So I kind of wanted to mix it up, and I decided, well, why not do a strength build, 54 strength, 30 or so faith, and then wield those somber weapons that really utilize those two stats. There isn't really a faith strength infusion, you kind of got to pick one or the other, but thanks to somber weapons, you can kind of have your hybrid builds and really enjoy them. And I, for one, really, really like the Ordovis Greatsword. It's get, it gets good strength scaling, it gets some modest faith scaling, and together it can be a pretty chunky weapon. I rather enjoy it. There's other good weapons, too, that can go with a mostly strength with some faith build. You can use the uh, Celeria Tree Great Spear. There's the uh, Magma Curved Swords. There's also Magma Worm Makar's Curved Great Sword. The McKellen Knight Sword. I think the Golden Epitaph Sword. To some varying degree of success, you could try the Giant's Braid Whip. Or even the Banished, uh, no, sorry, the Blasphemous Blade. Though the Blasphemous Blade really focuses on faith, it still gets pretty darn good scaling with strength and dex. So it's kind of a mostly faith quality weapon. These are all wonderful and fun choices for you to use if you too wish to be a paladin. In addition to having a good selection of weapons, you also get a mighty fine array of incantations. Most being the defensive ones, not necessarily any that scale with, say, damage or healing. But this fight is a great example of me having lightning resistance and being able to power through this guy's big lightning damage and then I can just piss him off with the knife, predict his running attack, and ruin his day. I hope he got the grace, he probably did, he was standing there for a while, but I was pretty proud of that moment. Speaking of being proud of moments, I took a little while, a little break I should say, before I started filming again, and that wasn't intentional. I didn't want to be away, but I was, and so I found that when I started recording again I was rusty, and so I recorded far more clips than I needed, just to shake off the rust a little bit. Normally when I make a video I like to record 15 or 20 clips and then pick the best of from that lot. I like jump and build, so it's to help with my rather short attention span. But for this video, I got like 53 semi-usable clips. <laughs> and, well, I shouldn't say they were all semi-usable. I should say uh, 53 wins in terms of invasions of varying quality. And I just played longer and decided to do that so that I could get you some higher quality footage, show off a little more of the build, and of course practice and get better. It's going to take a lot more to get good. <laughs> but a great place to start if you can manage is consistency. Consistently playing, being aware of what you're doing, and in my case, watching my footage to see my own mistakes in glaring detail and with that awful, sickening feeling that 2020 Retrospect offers you. Now, would I recommend this build to you? No, if you are a new player, if this is for some reason your first introduction to Elden Ring and you're looking for a build to copy, this ain't it. Uh, while I like this build and I think this build is pretty good, it could be better. It's not for a new player, I would say. This is a good build for your second character, I would say. Your first character should really just have one damage stat and then, of course, Vigor up to 60 when you're hitting them higher levels, just focusing health and one damage stat and just enough endurance for some armor, carry weight, things like that. It'll, it'll, you'll go a lot farther. There's plenty of good weapons that really focus on one damage stat. You can use an infusion depending on your damage stat. A build like this, there isn't an, infi an infusion for you. Now, I do have 54 strength, which means when I two-hand my weapon, it's going to act like 80 strength which is you don't get many returns after 80. You get some, but not a whole lot. So hard as, or sorry, not hard, sorry, heavy as an infusion for strength weapons, it's okay, it's decent enough, but you're still, you still have points on the wayside, points that aren't being utilized. In my case, that's like 30 faith that's not being used. So I really should use somber weapons to make sure I'm utilizing more of those points. Now there are things you can do, Sorry, I just wanted to see that spin and slash, so I waited for a moment. 
I was, I'm so horrible at remembering that Magma Shower is Spinning Slash on those little Magma Curve Swords. Every time I use the Magma Curve Swords, I forget that that's the Ash of War. I don't know why. Something about somber weapons just gets me not using the Ash of War when I should. Which I guess is better than spamming it, but still, like, it is a tool on your weapon. You better use it, even if sparingly. It's just another part of your arsenal. Now, oh, this poor guy. There's something funny about when you can bow somebody a point blank, and <laughs> you can just knock him over and bully him a little bit. Oh my goodness, and he dodged the arrow with a fat roll. Good on him. Excuse me as I realign my train of thought. Earlier, I was talking about what you can do if you have a hybrid build such as this, where you have a lot of strength and some faith, and if you're using a standard weapon with a heavy infusion, sure, you're utilizing your strength stat very well. But what about your faith stat? You got those 30 points of faith. What can you do? Well, in your case, you can use the claw mark seal, which will use some of your faith and some of your strength to give you some incantation scaling. Uh, not phenomenal for damage. It's something. It's okay. It's better than not having an incantation seal to use that strength stat of yours. So definitely a good choice. The B-Seal Incantations will get a little damage buff from the seal itself. But another thing you can do, and I didn't do it, but maybe there could be some success here, is using an incantation buff for your heavy weapon. I don't know if it'll be better than a Grease. I should have ran the numbers. I'm sure somebody in the uh, comment section will tell me what is a good spell buff level to have to make it worthwhile to beat out using a elemental grease on your weapon. There is the black flame blade buff. Say that 10 times fast. It only lasts like 10 seconds or so. It's not long. It does have a quick cast if I recall, but that could be a pain. I don't know if that would be any good. <laughs> maybe better with uh, God Slayer's seal and more faith, of course. And then you could maybe get away with using the lightning weapon buff incantation on your heavy weapon so you can get a little lightning damage on your faith weapon kind of make those points work for you i haven't tested it i don't know if it's better than the grease grease might be just more convenient even if it does less damage overall lightning might be a good pick though because everyone has rather low lightning resistance maybe that's something you can do on your paladin be a lightning paladin that's a neat idea i didn't think of that i kind of had the heavy weapons as contingencies and not necessarily as my main kit and that's the one thing I kind of regret about having a build like this. I so very much enjoy the pure one stat damage builds. Of course you have some of the other stats to like wield your weapons that you need. But the hybrid damage builds just don't seem to work out so well for me. Then again, this build, it was a little heavier. You might be able to have a more optimized paladin by just having less than 30 faith. I don't know what number would be good. 30 faith is nice though because of the incantations you get, so definitely a mixed bag i expect you in fact it is your job when you steal someone's build to optimize it to your taste doggone it don't just take it do something with it mix it blend it if you're gonna steal for fun and profit blend it just a little bit make it your own I mean, I know people get really upset about being wholly and totally original, not only in the build sphere for Souls-like games, but also in, like, the creative sphere, whether that be stories, art, character design, whatever your flavor of creativity is. People get really hung up on just being absolutely, totally, and completely original. But given that we are humans and we are pattern recognition seeking humans we're gonna see patterns especially if we look for them you're always going to be able to liken one piece of media to another or one piece of entertainment or just things that seem vaguely similar you are built for it so of course you're gonna see that so i wouldn't worry too much about being wholly and totally original but do blend things a little bit give it your own spin and of course develop the knowledge base so that you can do it yourself on intuition and not necessarily just constantly steal and emulate others. Now, there are things worthwhile. I like to, for instance, to show my lack of originality, I like to sometimes copy the structure of other people's inventories, just to see if I like them, just to try them out. And I've settled on one that's a hybridization of a few different people I've seen that I rather enjoy. Or like uh, your talisman setups in your inventory. Having talisman set up accordingly will help you swap in a you know, in a tight moment, and be able to just eke out a little more power with your build, a little more utility. And so knowing what inventory set up for your talismans that you like is a good thing. Oh my gosh, I feel so bad about that. 
roll catching my own co-invader with the great bow. That was a brainlit moment on my part. I should have swapped weapons. I don't know if I could have gotten him out of that. Maybe he would have dodged had I missed. I don't know. He could have died a second later to them. Maybe his fate was sealed. I don't know. And, you know, prolonged the fight a little bit. These two get a flask or two back. I don't know how much they get back, actually, for killing Invader. I know they get some. And so, prolongs the fight a little bit. Thankfully, the Great Bow just chips away at them so much that it didn't really matter. And the soft swap to the <laughs> Twin Swords. A lot of people get upset at Power Stance Straight Swords, and to be fair, they're good. They're not perfect. They're certainly met up, but they're, they're good enough that people get salty about them. And <laughs> it feels smarmy, but I've noticed a thing I didn't include in this video. It was in other footage that was less desirable. But it seems like not a horrible setup to have your own Ultra Greatsword, whether that is the Greatsword or a Zweihander. And then you have a straight sword in your offhand and another straight sword in your secondary slot for your right hand. So you can soft swap two Power Stance straight swords from using a Colossal Sword. And that seems pretty good because Colossal Sword offers big damage, hyper armor trades and then when people are low you can just soft swap to straight swords and of course when you just soft swap once press right on the d-pad to switch to the straight sword for your main hand it'll of course stop two-handing your main weapon and it's just it's already ready to go and i was able to roll catch that guy in the previous invasion i know that that's not what's going on on screen but you're gonna have to bear with me now i completely understand that carrying three swords on your person in your soft swap slots is not optimal in the least bit. It is convenient, but it's not optimal. If you want to be optimal, you'd probably just have a Colossal Sword in your main hand, and then, of course, build the weight for your character to have a Straight Sword in your offhand, and then you would just hard swap your Colossal Great Sword to your Straight Sword and make it work that way. But there's something nice about just tapping right on the D-pad and it's done. <laughs> it's very silly. Of course, if you're good at them hard swaps, disregard. However, if you're not very good at the hard swaps, maybe a soft swap is a good idea for you. But then again, maybe you could do more with those endurance points elsewhere. So, just something I played with a little bit while filming, and I kind of liked it. And I wonder what other soft swap options could be good. An easy one that a lot of people like to do is, of course, dagger to soft swap to. Because if you get a crit, you can soft swap, capitalize on the crit, do big damage. Especially in the case of the Misericord. Or you can switch to the dagger and do a running light attack to finish off somebody who's just got a tiny little sliver of HP. And did you see that rolling backstab? This was one of my uh, last invasions during recording. Not the last, but one of the last. There was a handful after this, I believe. And I felt like it was finally clicking for me how to be an invader. And of course, I was being a little smarmy. All invaders are smarmy to some degree. It's in the job description. It's to be expected. But when you can do a roll and capitalize on a backstab in the middle of a fight, just free damage that their latency doesn't necessarily protect them from, it feels nice. Now, of course, if they're very late, they can likely get away. But if you get that backstab just right, oh, it's so nice. And I flub that, that unlocked on free cam hit. Oh, I flubbed it so bad. And I am so very thankful that they gave up chasing me. They ran back. And so I was able to heal up, get ready, wait for the white stuff to dissipate on my body. That come f comes from that uh, winged scythe, which is a phenomenal tool for stopping people from healing. Really underutilized. I haven't seen it in a good while. Faith builds need to use that. I swear, it's so helpful. Not everybody's going to make the albinuric pots or whatever that block healing. They're not very popular. I don't know if they're very easy to hit either. That's a thing to consider. But back to my small point. It was starting to click. I was starting to get it. I was starting to see some success. It was starting to make sense. I felt like I was conserving my resources. I was still a little dumb during this. <laughs> like parrying what I'm, I'm trying to kick, actually. But my brain is small, and I'm trying to compensate for that. <laughs> and I'm trading with the Ultra Greatsword like a doofus. But thankfully we're able to heal. He wants to hide behind his shield, so we harass him with the knife. So he puts that guard up, and then kick. Guard break. Critical hit. Big damage. 
very pleasing, even to a brainlet like myself. I see a lot of people when they have a dagger in their soft swap slot, they put usually either indoor or uh, Bloodhound Step on that dagger for their Ash of War. And I don't know why, but I just like having kick on it. I like using it as just my shield break tool. It doesn't it's not the best Ash of War for it. If you're really smart, you'll just unequip your weapons except for the dagger. You'll soft swap to a bare hand. You'll kick and then you'll swap swap back to the dagger and then capitalize on the crit. That is the more efficient way to do that, because then you can have a better Ash of War on your dagger. I haven't done that. I like just having the <gasps> kick on there so it can be a bit of a surprise I suppose I don't know it's worked for me I should probably change it and get better new thought I'm glad to be back invading again it's fun I really enjoy it it's a, a sense of challenge that you don't really find anywhere else and I finally was getting the hang of it and as I was getting the hang of it and filming way more clips than I normally do, I realized how badly I want to play a different build. Not that I don't like this build, don't get me wrong, but I, I played a fair bit more in a row. I'm used to build hopping where I can. And this rude bull goat here, do you see him? He dispelled my buffs. That was so rude. And he's using a moon veil, and he's using a river's blood, and he has bull goats on. And he can use the int, uh dispel your buffs incantation I'm trying to remember what it's called I think it's law of progression and he's able to tank and trade and he's got that big poise and then it occurred to me oh this guy's a high high level this guy is a really high level sure I meta I should be able to handle him if I have my head screwed on right but sometimes you get a little blindsided by the guy who's got the big stats he's a huge threat something you gotta keep your eye on where you can in fact I might uh, show how many runes he gives on death let's take a peek there one moment there it is 37k <laughs> sped past it but no it was uh, what was it yeah I think it was like 37k what is that level 311 312 somewhere around there Higher than level 300, which, that's a lot of points. You can kind of have everything you want at level 300 with minimal sacrifice. My goodness. I don't know why. I always find it very gratifying to kill an over-leveled phantom. But that was a nice little war. Learned a fair bit. I should really work on my spacing. Spacing, neutral. Uh, neutral being, like, anytime you're not, like, actively attacking or actively rolling away from somebody. It's that weird in-between part of the fight. And it's all that stuff that you really learn when you do a lot of duels, do a lot of 1v1 competitives, that I should probably do more of. But duels in the arena usually aren't that exciting to me personally. Sometimes they can be cool. I've included them in videos before, but for the most part, I want to be in the wild, wild west. That is the invasion field. And that's where I want to see the action happening. That's the part of the game where everything is just so unpredictable in my mind where you see very varying things people have weird and zany builds as uh, both people going through the game and the occasional gank squad I see some unique stuff I feel like I don't see unique stuff in the arena very often I should probably give it another shot but I wanted to turn the microphone towards you dear viewer proverbially for just a moment is there a hybrid build you like? Is there something you rather enjoy that's not a pure dex or pure strength or pure damage stat build? Is there a hybrid build you enjoy? That's what I'm trying to articulate here. I personally am a fan of the 50, 54 strength with 20 or so intelligence. I like those weapons that are offered, and you also don't have too much intelligence so that the, uh, you know, the strength infusion or the heavy infusion is not too bad. So... Tell me which one you like. I want to hear about it. Sometimes people have weird and zany combinations when they mix their stats, and I want to hear about it. Doggone it. You better tell me all about it. I'll, I'll, I'll appreciate you. I'll appreciate you so much for sharing your time and engaging with the content. My goodness. I love that guy in the background there, that phantom. He just wants to put the stupid America's mischief on and hide as a prop in the environment. And I just wasn't letting him. 
I felt so dumb missing that shot at point blank. I feel like that's usually where I get people. Usually it's a roll catch, but that guy was smart and he strafed me. So kudos to him. He may have been a more consistent player than me, but I have a great sword, which means I can be stupid and mash at a hit stun. There we go. Do you see that? And I can make him regret it. I was playing way too stupid, way too aggressive for this particular invasion. I think it was probably because I had seen these people once before and that clip wasn't too exciting. A little drawn out. Not very fun. This one, on the other hand, very fun. And so that's why I, when I saw the deer off to the side, I knew one of the deer was supposed to be the uh, phantom deer, was supposed to be him already disguised. They've uh, already pulled that trick on me once. It didn't work that time, but I had extra time to prep for it. And there we go. We get the trade. The phantom's gone. And this poor host, my goodness, I may have been able to handle him on my own. Probably. Maybe. I hope so. But with a co-invader, he's toast. He's absolutely gone. And this uh, other invader seems competent enough. But hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. You deserved it. Thank you for coming with me on this silly journey. Bye bye now.